This video was sponsored by Card Kingdom. You can visit their store by using my referral link in the description below. Hi everyone, I'm Nita Hone, and today is Wednesday, and that means it's time for the 41st edition of Deck History. In this series, I trace the development of prominent Magic deck archetypes from their origins to the present day. Before we jump into today's video, I want to draw your attention to channel memberships, which are now available. As a channel member, you offer me direct support, and you get some pretty nice perks in return. You get a badge in the comment section, access to a Discord server, and early access to videos. Channel members were able to watch this deck history 24 hours before everyone else. To become a channel member, just click join down below. As is usually the case for deck history videos, I ran a poll last week to let the viewers decide the topic of this video, and in the end, Primeval Titan decks defeated Spirits. If you want to have a say in next week's video, go to the Community tab now and vote on the topic for next week's video. Obviously enough, Primeval Titan decks are decks that use... Primeval Titan. This powerful 6-drop creature lets you search up any two lands when it enters the battlefield or attacks. This includes non-basic lands, something that has been very important for the Titan over the years. Obviously, it does a really good job of ramping your mana in addition to tutoring up whatever lands you want. That effect has been powerful enough that decks featuring the Titan as a centerpiece have found success in Standard, Extended, Modern, and Legacy. In this video, we'll talk about Primeval Titan decks in each of these formats and discuss how and why they have changed over time. While we are going to look at several different Primeval Titan decks in this video, we're going to spend the most time focusing on decks that really effectively utilize the Titan. In particular, Standard Wolf Run Ramp, Modern Amulet Titan, and Legacy Titan Post. Let's start with a look at Standard, a format where the Titan thrived between 2010 and 2012. It had an extra long time in Standard as a result of being printed in both Magic 2011 and Magic 2012. Love Jance was the first to pilot a Primeval Titan deck to a top 8 finish at a major event, and he did this on the biggest stage there is, the World Championship in 2010. His Eldrazi Green deck was a ramp deck that looked to ramp into big Eldrazi, and the Titan was nice because he could not only help you ramp in general, he could also search up your powerful non-basics, Eldrazi Temple and Eye of Ugin, which were crucial to letting you hard cast things like Ulamog and Emrakul. The deck also features Colony Garden, a card we're going to see a lot of in this video. It's a nice card to search up with the Titan when you need to buy yourself a bit more time, because it's a land that gives you a body on the board. So, in Eldrazi Green, Primeval Titan was an enabler more than it was a primary win condition of the deck. Obviously enough, though, you could just win the game with the Titan if you needed to. Eldrazi Green wouldn't be the last standard deck to feature the Titan, though, not by a long shot. Valakut Ramp was the next deck to feature the Titan, and once again, the Titan is a major enabler for a deck that is reliant on non-basic lands. Valakut Ramp decks look to use Valakut the Molten Pinnacle to do massive amounts of damage just by playing lands. You might be more familiar with Valakut strategies that utilize Scape Shift, but that wasn't available in the standard of 2011, and that meant the Titan was one of the best ways to search up both Valakut and Mountains. Once the Titan comes down, the opponent tends to lose the game really quickly. Titan Valakut decks continued to be very successful in Standard for much of 2011, but later in the year, the format's Titan deck changed. The new deck was called Wolf Run Ramp, or Kessig Titan. Obviously, that means Kessig Wolf Run is key in this deck, and that's yet another powerful land the Titan can search up quite easily. So obviously it was a ramp deck, one that leaned heavily on the Titan and Wolf Run, as the name would indicate. The two combined quite nicely together, since Kessig Wolf Run also wants a bunch of mana to really do its job. It can basically turn any creature into lethal. The deck also had something of a combo kill, where you could search up Ink Moth Nexus and the Wolf Run together with the Titan, and the evasion and infect of the Nexus could allow you to one-shot your opponent pretty easily in the late game. Kessig Titan decks would continue to be a major force in Standard in 2011 and 2012 without any major changes to the deck. Some versions splashed black for access to some better removal, but apart from that, change was minimal. Then, in 2012, Primeval Titan rotated out of Standard, never to return. Let's move now to Extended, which featured Titan decks in 2011, which was the last year that format existed. Obviously enough, Extended doesn't exist today, but it was a rotating format that featured the last several years of sets. Two Primeval Titan decks finished in the top eight at Extended's second-to-last premiere event, which was Grand Prix Atlanta in 2011. 
The extended Primeval Titan deck was once again all about Valakut the Molten Pinnacle, and this version of the deck did have access to Scapeshift. There's already a deck history on Scapeshift decks, so I'm not going to go super deep on them in this video, or other Primeval Titan decks that involve Scapeshift, but to sum up how they work, if you cast Scapeshift and sacrifice all of your lands and search up Valakuts and Mountains, that's usually enough to do lethal right away. The Titan, along with other ramp, helps you quickly get enough lands into play so that when you cast Scapeshift, shift you can get lethal damage. As I said, these were the waning moments of the extended format, and that means there's not any more Titan decks to talk about in extended. However, Primeval Titan decks would successfully transition to modern, the format that replaced extended as a premier level event with a larger card pool, though not quite as large as Legacy or Vintage. Modern would become the format where Primeval Titan decks succeeded the most. And really, saying Titan decks successfully transitioned to the format is an understatement. Primeval Titan decks have been important in modern for the entirety of the format's history, and it's one of the pillars of the format. Pro Tour Philadelphia was the very first modern Pro Tour. It was famously switched from extended to modern only three weeks before the event. If you're interested in hearing more about that crazy situation, I did write an article about it over on Card Kingdom. Anyway, the first Titan deck in the format was Jesse Hampton's Breach Post deck. As you should be expecting by now, this Titan deck was really into non-basic lands, in particular Cloud Post and Glimmer Post, which the deck sought to use to produce absurd amounts of mana and ramp into incredibly powerful threats, like Eldrazi. On its own, by entering the battlefield and then attacking, the Titan can fetch you four copies of either of the post lands, but the crazy mana doesn't end there because the deck also uses Vesuva, which you can use to copy your other Cloud Posts or Glimmer Posts and produce even crazier amounts of mana. The Titan really enabled this deck to do its thing, because its ability to quickly search up all those non-basics was massively important. The deck also ran through the Breach, which is where the Breach part of the name comes from. This could be used to cheat a huge threat into play for a single swing, but if you used through the Breach to put a Titan into play, it would trigger twice in one turn, searching you up those four lands and giving you the mana you need to just keep casting the other powerful things in your deck in hand. Following this event, Cloudpost was banned out of Modern because this deck was far too good at generating obscene amounts of mana in the very early game. Obviously, this meant a change of scenery for Primeval Titan, but it would still find a place to excel. It would move into a pretty familiar home at first, too, Scapeshift decks. Two such decks finished in the top eight at Grand Prix Portland in 2013, and they look a whole lot like the extended Scapeshift decks we saw earlier. This would be the primary home for the Titan for much of 2013, and Scapeshift decks using the Titan have showed up intermittently throughout Modern's history. But in 2014, a new, and arguably better, Titan deck emerged, one that has existed in one form or another ever since 2014, and that's Bloom Titan. Pyotr Glagowski was the first player to top 8 a modern event with this innovative Titan deck. Like a lot of the decks we've seen, the main game plan here was to produce a bunch of mana, but this version of the deck did it in a pretty interesting way. It leaned on Summer Bloom and Amulet of Vigor. The Amulet made all of your permanents enter the battlefield untapped. This included lands searched up by the Titan, which opened up some new ground for how you could use the Titan's land searching ability, since now you could use those lands right away. Summer Bloom, meanwhile, allowed you to play three extra lands in a turn. This could ramp you, obviously, enough, but the Bloom plus the Amulet plus any Ravnica bounce land was particularly busted. The Ravnica lands normally interplay tapped and return another land to your hand. With the Amulet in play, you could produce mana with them before they bounced another land to your hand, and you could simply bounce the land itself. And then you could do it three more times if you cast Summer Bloom, casting the land and bouncing it back to your hand every time. This could allow you to cast a turn two Primeval Titan, who would also fetch you two more lands. And from what we've already seen in this video, that is incredibly powerful. The deck also uses Azusa, which couldn't produce quite as much mana with the bounce lands as Summer Bloom, but it did give the deck another way to play multiple lands in a turn. This version of the deck ran a ton of utility lands it could search up, but it also used some lands you could use in combination with one another to great effect. For example, when the Titan entered the battlefield, you could search up Boros Garrison and Slayer's Stronghold to swing with your new Titan immediately and search up two more lands. If you had the extra mana around, you could use Sun Home Fortress of the Legion to give the Titan double strike on top of the other boost, and that was usually enough to win the game in a single swing. You could also throw Vesuva into the mix to gain additional copies of any of these powerful lands. One great thing about this deck, though, was that it could win the game even if the Titan wasn't allowed to stick around. 
The deck could ramp into Hive Mind and then cast one of its Pact spells. Your opponent would copy those spells, of course, but then they would be unable to pay for them on their next upkeep and they would lose the game. Summoner's Pact was particularly nice because you could also use it to search up your Titan. Bloom Titan decks continue to find a ton of success throughout the remainder of 2014 and for all of 2015. In fact, the decks were too successful and too good at winning the game with absurdly powerful plays in the very early game. In January of 2016, Summer Bloom got banned out of Modern as a result of this deck's power. So by 2016, both Cloudpost and Summer Bloom had been banned to weaken Titan decks. However, while Titan decks were certainly weakened by this banning, it didn't put an end to Primeval decks in Modern. They have continued to be successful even after Summer Bloom got banned. However, as you would imagine, Titan decks started to look a bit different. Scapeshift and Valakut Titan variants continue to find success in the format, but there was also a direct descendant of Bloom Titan that showed up in the last quarter of 2016. Kevin Grove piloted his Bloomless Titan deck to a top 8 finish at Grand Prix Lille that year, and as you can see, the deck doesn't look that different from what we've already seen. The deck could still do silly things with Amulet of Vigor, Primeval Titan, and Bounce Lands. It had to lean a little more on more general ramp and Azusa to get things going, and turn 2 Titans were no longer a regular occurrence, but the deck could still generate lots of mana and win the game fairly quickly. For a while, Valakut and Scapeshift decks found the most success of the various Primeval Titan decks, but by 2018, Amulet of Vigor-based Titan decks again became the more prominent deck. By this point, the deck came to be known as Amulet Titan. The Hivemind plan had been entirely abandoned, and Sakura Tribelder and Explore were both added to the deck. These cards weren't new to the format or anything, but they hadn't really been utilized in a Primeval Titan shell until 2018. Obviously, these cards can do something somewhat similar to the banned Summer Bloom, allowing you to multiply the mana you get out of your bounce lands, so now the deck wasn't nearly as reliant on Azusa to get things going in the early game. Amulet Titan decks continue to be successful alongside Titan Valica decks throughout 2018 and 2019. Then in 2020, Primeval Titan decks got an exciting new land that resulted in a new deck that was neither an Amulet or Valica deck. And that land was Field of the Dead, a card that felt tailor-made for Primeval Titan. Field of the Dead can generate a ton of creature tokens, provided you are playing lands that don't share names with other lands you control. Obviously, the Titan can help you find the field, and it can also allow you to search up whatever lands you need to make more zombie tokens. As a result, this deck runs a whole lot of lands with different names. Basically, once you have the Titan and Field of the Dead around, Primeval Titan starts to feel a whole lot like Grave Titan. Not long after this deck did its thing, two of the deck's supporting cards, Oko and Once Upon a Time, got banned, and this led to Titan decks in the format shifting back in the direction of Amulet of Vigor. Field of the Dead, by the way, also ultimately ended up getting banned in Modern 2, though not until 2021, but this did mean that the Titan and the Field were no longer an option at all in the format. Let's move forward to 2022 now, so we can take a look at how Amulet Titan decks look today, where we can find it making use of some newer cards. Among the newer cards in the 2020 version of Amulet Titan, you can find Arboreal Grazer and Dryad of the Elysian Grove. These both allow you to get extra lands into play more quickly, which can be particularly powerful if you get an Amulet of Vigor on turn 1. The Dryad actually provides some additional utility too. It makes all of your lands have every basic land type. This not only provides great fixing, it combines well with Valakut, the Molten Pinnacle, since now all of your lands would be mountains. As you can see, the deck doesn't lean super hard on the Valakut plan, and this is because if you don't have the Dryad around, it doesn't do a whole lot in the deck. But it is a very real win condition, if you have a Dryad in play. Amulet Titan decks these days also use Cultivator Colossus, which gives you a big creature, and it can also draw you a bunch of cards when it enters the battlefield, since your deck has so many lands and you're likely to have some in your hand. And of course, you can give it haste and double strike and all of that stuff to win the game in a single swing. The land base for the deck also includes some important newer cards. One of these is Urza's Saga, a powerful land that can give you mana, a creature token, and then search up a cheap artifact in the deck, including the all-important Amulet of Vigor. Castle Garenbrig also gives the deck another way to ramp mana. 
So Modern has featured at least one Primeval Titan deck ever since the format began in 2011, and you can still sleeve up some Titans and some Amulets if you want to play the format today. The deck has changed around over the years, of course, but the Titans' continued and consistent success in Modern is quite impressive, as the format has undergone a lot of turnover over the years. Modern is certainly the format where Primeval Titan decks have done the most, and by a pretty wide margin, but we still have one more format to cover, Legacy. While the Titan is played as a one-of in various four-color Yorion decks in the format, it's only featured there as a one-of in the deck as something to tutor up. And it is far from a central part of the deck, so we aren't going to cover those decks in detail here. However, there is one legacy deck where the Titan is played as a full four-of because it's central to the deck's strategy, and those are Titan Post decks. This deck kind of brings things full circle, since it has the same basic strategy as the first Primeval Titan modern deck we saw. It looks to get Cloud Post, Glimmer Post, and Vesuva into play to generate insane mana for big spells. Just like we saw in Modern, the Titan really facilitates your ability to assemble this mana. The deck also features Show and Tell, which can allow you to cheat those big creatures into play, as well as the Titan. While Titan Post decks have had a consistent presence in the format since 2018, it isn't exactly a pillar of the format the way Titan decks are in Modern. However, these decks do still exist today. While the basic build of the deck is pretty much the same, the deck does now have access to Elvish Reclaimer, which is kind of like a mini Primeval Titan, in that it is able to search up any land. It can even get bigger if you have enough lands in your graveyard. So that's the history of Primeval Titan decks. As we've seen, Primeval Titan has had a pretty big impact on multiple formats, and this is especially true in Modern. Whether it was in Cloud Post, Valakut, Bloom Titan, or Amulet Titan, the giant has been a constant presence in the format for all 11 years of its history. Turns out a big old giant that can tutor up two lands every turn is pretty insane. If you enjoyed this video, please like it and share it so that others can enjoy it too. If you want to make sure you catch future episodes of this series and a whole lot of additional magic content, do me a favor and subscribe. If you want to watch the other 40 episodes of this series, you should see a playlist on your screen shortly. And if you want to go the extra mile in supporting the channel, check out the description where you can find a whole lot of ways to do that between becoming a patron, between becoming a YouTube member, buying merch from my merch store, and so on. Thanks for watching.